Hello everybody. So today we are going to start looking at the idea of average value. Um, so let's start with just defining what an average value is. There are really two big ways to interpret the average value of a function. The first interpretation is that it is the value of y that explains where a function would level off if we spread out all of its area equally. So if we counted all of the area enclosed between this curve and the x-axis, and we said, OK, let's add it all up and let's spread it out equally over this distance, the average value would be the height. The way we can visualize that is that this extra area that's up here above the average value line, so this is sort of the line that shows the average value, would perfectly fill in this area below that line. It would sort of dump into there. And what that would do is create a rectangle that is the same height all the way across that is evenly spreading out that area over this distance. A second way to think about average value that is still connected to this interpretation but slightly different is that when we calculate the average value, we are essentially adding up all of the y values over this interval and then dividing by the interval itself, how many we added. In other words, we are averaging the values. So in order to do this, how do you actually execute it algebraically? If the formula for finding average value looks like this. It's going to be the integral from a to b. In other words, your interval on the graph of your f of x function. But in order to spread it out evenly, in order to make it spread out over that interval, we have to divide by b minus a. Now b minus a is the size of the interval. So in this problem up here, a would have been 0 and b would have been 2 pi. So what we would be doing is we would be saying add up all the y values or all of the area between here and here and then divide it by this distance so we can spread it out evenly. Another way you're going to commonly see this written because it just looks a little bit more elegant is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of our f of x function. So let's see if we can figure this out. We're going to do this without a calculator and then we're going to check our answer using our calculator. So number one says find the average value of this function over the interval between negative one and two and then we're going to do this two ways. So way number one would be finding the average value without a calculator. So our formula for average value says that if you want to get the average value of the function, you're going to integrate over your interval, so my interval goes from negative 1 to 2, of your function, which is 1 plus x squared dx. And then to make it an average, instead of just adding up all the numbers and finding the area, we need to spread it out evenly. So we would do 1 over b minus a, which would be 2 minus negative 1. Now if we simplify this, it gives us 1 over 2 minus negative 1 would be 3 times the integral from negative 1 to 2 of 1 plus x squared dx. Now in order to figure out this integral, we're going to need to do the antiderivative. I'm going to go ahead and leave the 1 third here at the beginning and deal with the integral separately, and then I'll multiply by 1 third at the end. So the antiderivative of 1 plus x squared would be x plus 1 third x cubed plus c, integrating between negative 1 and 2. I'm going to drop down the 1 third. I'm still just dealing with the integral. I would plug in the 2 first, so 2 plus 8 thirds plus c minus, and then I would plug in the negative 1, negative 1 minus 1 third plus c. The c's would cancel, and I would have 1 third, and then I'm going to deal with the integral. 
I'm going to have 2 plus 8 thirds. If I distribute this negative, I have plus 1 plus 1 third. Now that's going to simplify, so I'm going to have 1 third. Let me shift this so you can see it better. 1 third times, now 2 plus 1 is 3. 8 thirds plus 1 third is 9 thirds, which is also 3. So this would be 1 third times 6, and 1 third of 6 is just 2. So my average value would be 2. Now, if I wanted to do this on my calculator to check myself, I could quite literally just type it in. So I would do math 9. I would integrate from negative 1 to 2 of 1 plus x squared dx, and then just divide by 3, because I'm doing the 1 third part. And I could verify that my answer was 2. So when I do this on my calculator, I would literally just type in 1 third times the integral from negative 1 to 2 of 1 plus x squared dx, and it would give me 2 to confirm my answer. Now let's take a look at some applications of average value. So when, we, when do we find the average value using that formula? How am I going to know when I read a question that that's what I'm supposed to do? When a problem asks you to find the average amount of stuff, I'm going to call it stuff, and then gives you a function that describes the amount of stuff that you have, that's when you know you need to find the average value. So if I read this problem, it says, one day a strange weather system moved into town, and the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit over the next 24 hours was given by the formula that is shown here, where that is the temperature. So this is a formula that is telling me the temperature. Now the next sentence says, what is the average temperature? Do you see how it says temperature here and that this is, this should say temperature, apparently I just spelled it wrong when I typed it, but that should say temperature there. If they give you a formula for the temperature and then say find the average temperature, that would mean that we want to find the average value. So to do that, we would do 1 over, now it tells me it's a 24 hour period, so 24 minus 0 times the integral from. Now what you're going to notice here is that the bounds of this integral are the same as the b and the a that I used here. So this is 24 minus 0 and this is 24 and 0. And then inside of there I would just put my temperature formula. So 70 plus 2 times the sine of t over 2 minus t over 2 dt. And you'll notice that I wrote this using a dt because the variable here is a t. Now, 24 minus 0 is just 24. So on my calculator, I'm going to type in 1 over 24. Math 9, integral from 0 to 24 of 70 plus 2 sine of x over 2 minus x over 2. And it should give me 64. 0.026. Now the follow-up question here is, what would the units be? So let's think about what we're doing. When we do this integral, so when we think about the units, when we do this integral, we're doing the area of a temperature graph. Now in that temperature graph, if I just sort of sketch a picture over here, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is given here and the time in hours is given here. So when I do the area here, I'm getting degrees Fahrenheit times hours because I'm getting the area. But then I'm multiplying that by 1 over the hours because 24 and 0 are times, they're hours. So if I do 1 over hours, times degrees Fahrenheit times hours, the hours end up canceling and my units would just be degrees Fahrenheit. 
Now let's see if that makes sense. If I want to know the average temperature and I say, hey, what was the average temperature in, J in June, for example, it should make sense that we would measure that in degrees Fahrenheit, not degrees Fahrenheit per hour or degrees Fahrenheit times hours, just this many degrees. So it should make sense that if I'm finding the average temperature, the average amount that I find would be measured in degrees Fahrenheit. Now the last thing I want to talk about is sort of knowing this when you see it. So let me just refocus for a second. So suppose that C of T represents the daily cost of heating your house measured in dollars per day, where T is time measured in days and T equals zero corresponds to January 1st, 2010. Interpret one over 90 minus zero times the integral from zero to 90 of C of T using units in the context of the problem. When I see this, I need to think that this is the formula for the average of the function. Now this function represents the average daily cost of heating your house in dollars per day. So this is the formula for the average daily cost of heating your house measured in dollars per day. And that's what we need to write. 1 over 90 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 90 of C of T dt gives the average You'll notice I'm using the word average because we're finding the average value of this. And we're being specific. Don't say average value. Say the average daily cost of heating your house. Now what we just learned, because this does say specifically using units, what we just learned in the previous problem is that the units here, degrees Fahrenheit, are the same as the units of the original formula. So for example, the original formula here was measuring the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. So this formula, which is measuring in dollars per day, will be the same as the units I get when I talk about the average. So we would say this formula gives the average daily cost of heating your house measured in dollars per day. And we also have to be specific about the interval. This was the average temperature for the first 24 hours. This is going to be the average cost of heating your house measured in dollars per day over the interval from 0 to 90. So since T here is measured in days after January 1st, 2010, we would say over the first 90 days of 2010. Now there are three components here you have to include. You have to include the average of what you're averaging. You have to include the units and you have to include the time interval. Now the next follow-up question and the last thing that we'll talk about is how is this different from the integral just without the average, just the integral from 0 to 90? Well when we integrate we're just adding things up. So if we just add up the daily cost of heating your house measured in dollars per day and we just do the area, let's imagine what's happening to a graph. On a graph my C of T formula is giving me all of the costs measured in dollars per day. And this is all of the days. 
If I find that area, I'm doing dollars per day times days. So I'm just getting the dollars. So what I'm really doing here is adding up all of the cost. What that means is that the integral, instead of giving me the average, is giving me the total cost over the first 90 days. So the integral from 0 to 90 of C of T dt gives the total cost of heating your house and this time it would just be measured in dollars over the first 90 days. of 2010. Okay, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful afternoon and we will practice some average value problems tomorrow.